Good morning. Good morning. A very warm welcome to uh, worship at Mavilla Abbey Church, whether you're here in the building or whether you're joining us um, uh, from home or online. And if, if this is your first time of joining us, you are most welcome. For those of you uh, in the building who may be here for the first time, um, we do ask that you'll keep your mask on uh, for the duration uh, of, of, of worship. I know that's a little bit uncomfortable. Hopefully we're moving the way things are going with COVID. The, hopefully we're moving towards uh, less restrictions uh, in, in the coming months. But uh, for now, let's just try and keep one another uh, safe in that, that way. This morning is a service of Holy Communion. We come around the Lord's table together to remember uh, in a physical meal of bread and wine um, how Jesus died. He gave his body and his blood for us. And we're sharing in, in that, that meal together this morning. And if you're at home, uh, we would love for you to be able to take part uh, uh, in uh, this part of the service. So if you have some uh, bread and wine or some juice uh, at home, then you might want to get that ready so that you can take part in that meal with us. Uh, so we're all together as a family and sharing that together uh, th this morning. Now with the uh, restrictions uh, of the pandemic, uh, many things have been curtailed for us in life, haven't they, with restricted and limited numbers at weddings and funerals. And uh, also baptisms uh, have, have been affected. I think we've only had uh, one infant baptism in the last 18 months, I think, uh, which is a real, a real shame. But I'm delighted to say that we have some baptisms in, in preparation. In two weeks' time, uh, we're looking forward to uh, an adult baptism, and uh, somebody is also going to um, uh, be received into, into membership. So we're really looking forward to that. And we have a number of others who are interested in baptism uh, 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 coming up uh, as well. So that's, that's really uh, exciting. And you know, when uh, you are baptized, when you become a, a member of the church, you become a member of a huge multi-million member family around the world. The church is the largest voluntary organization in the world, feeding the hungry, housing the homeless, healing the sick, lifting up the poor. This is what we do as God's church. And um, uh, really excited to announce uh, our next slide, please, uh, Ian, uh, that uh, Samaritan's Purse, who do the Operation Christmas Child Ministry, our 130 uh, shoe boxes that we were able to give at Christmas were added to the 3,067 that came from churches around Ards and North Down, and that's contributed to a worldwide total of 10.5 million uh, shoe boxes that, are, that have, have gone to children uh, in, in very poor communities uh, in other parts of the world. And that's a real demonstration of, of, of God's love. If you gave to that, thank you. Uh, another way in which we can, can serve and to be the church uh, in, in sharing God's care for our community um, locally is in our litter picking ministry. We have uh, a ministry where a number of us will, will, will get together once or twice a month, go out on a Saturday morning just for an hour and a half, and we'll just pick up some of the litter around the streets, uh, within the, sort of the, the, the streets around, around this building. You don't have to have experience, you don't have to have equipment, everything's provided, that's right, isn't it, isn't it Ian? Uh, everything's provided, yeah. So if you've never done it before and you'd like to have a bit of crack next Saturday morning, come on down. Families are welcome uh, too and you can join in with our litter picking ministry and just make our community look that much bit better uh, for everybody uh, living here. New wine uh, is something that uh, many of us will be familiar with. It's an annual uh, conference uh, every summer. Um, Last year, New Wine was unable to, to happen, but this year, um, there are going to be two uh, blocks of four days uh, conferences uh, in July, and uh, if you'd like to be part of that, that conference, even just coming down for a day or coming for either of those four days, uh, the early bird cheap rate finishes at the end of February. Uh, if you'd like more details about that, you can speak to me, you can speak to Ian or Rosie Lappin. Uh, there's a number of others who, who've been to, to New Wine. Uh, we'd love to have a good crowd from uh, Mavilla being part of that this year. 
And if you've not been part of it or don't know what it is, here's a very short taster video uh, so, so we, you would know what it's all about. So two options there, the 9th to the 12th of July or the 14th to 17th of July. Uh, four days of, uh, of, of fun, of, of, of fellowship together with other Christians. It's the church coming together uh, so that we can learn how to transform uh, communities uh, around us. Now as we come to God uh, together this morning, let's uh, bring ourselves to God uh, in prayer. Let's just close our eyes. For a moment, God is here. Paul, the Apostle Paul, uh, once said of God that in him we live and move and have our being. Just like a fish is surrounded by water, so we're surrounded uh, by God. Let's become consciously aware of his presence and in the silence of our hearts, let's just say that we're open to meet with him, that we're open to welcome him from the outside to the inside, to come and to change us and to transform us. I don't know if you've ever had the, the privilege of somebody saying that they would pray for you uh, in person and in particular. It's always very special when somebody says that they will do that for you. Amazing thing about the Christian faith is that we have somebody in heaven who prays for us. Even if you've never experienced another human being saying that they will pray for you and the situation that you're in, Jesus is praying for you. Jesus is rooting for you. Jesus is interceding for you. And he's doing that right now. So Lord, we just uh, welcome you. Thank you for this opportunity to come into your presence. Thank you that you are for us, not against us. Thank you that you, you desire, you seek, you pray for our transformation. Thank you that you love and accept us as we are, but you love us too much to leave us that way. You invite us to be transformed, to be, uh, to, to be made better. So Lord, we want to be made better this morning. We, we lay ourselves before you and pray that, Lord, you would bring your transformation to us in Jesus' name. Amen. Now let's uh, stand together and sing uh, of the fact that we have one on the throne who uh, roots for us before the throne of God above. Oh. 
you so much for your great love for us. When Satan tempts us to despair and remind us of the guilt within upwards, I look and see him there who made an end to all my sin. Lord, we have, each one of us here this morning, sinned against you and against our neighbor in in how we think, in what we say, and what we do, through negligence, through weakness, and, yes, through our own deliberate fault at times. And Lord, we just want to say this morning as we come into your presence that we're truly sorry, that we repent of all our sins. Thank you that you have given your life for us to be forgiven. For the sake of your son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, we ask that you'd forgive all that is past in our lives and grant that we may serve you in newness of life this morning. May we have a sense as we walk out from this place back into our lives at home and in our lives at work, uh, Lord, that we have newness of life, that we've left something bad behind And we've taken something good with us, Lord. May we sense that, we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Let's take our seats. So over the last um, few weeks, using the Apostles' Creed, we've been looking together at what we believe as a church. And it's really important that we do this. And we've learned that to believe what we say about God and his life in us as his church is to live those things, to do what we say. To believe is to live. Now, if you could put the next slide up for me, please, Ian. Uh, There's the... the, uh, the beginning of the Apostles' Creed. We're going we're gonna to say these words together uh, in a moment as a reminder of the things that uh, we believe uh, as a church. But so far, we've, we've focused together only on that first line. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and her, earth. We've learned that God, in his very personality as Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, is united in a community of love. And if we are going to live what we believe, that means we too, as the church, have to be a community of love. Love for one another and love for uh, everybody around us. We've learned that what kind of God we believe in is really important. 
and that to know God is first and foremost a truly good father who truly loves us and truly has good things for us is absolutely vital. Not only for us to be happy, but for us to share him with others. Without that, we have no good news. If we have a, a wrong view of God, then we have a wrong view of the way, the way things work. In a moment, when we sing our next worship song, our children and their leaders uh, will go out and there'll be crushed for any, any preschoolers that might be here. And then Michael's going to, to, to come up here and we're all going to be learning, adults and children, in two separate places about God in the person of Jesus and how God, as a community of love, is revealed in the person of Jesus for you and for me. So let's remind ourselves of what we believe as we say these words together. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. God invites us uh, to, to good things. And whether we understand all, all of the creed, or wh whether we, it's something we aspire to, God has good things for us. So I'm going to pray for us now as our, our children will, will go out in a second as we sing our next song. And for all of us who, who after the next song, as we get ready to think more about what these things mean. Father, thank you that you are a good God. It is your nature to be good. You are good and you are loving. You are our good heavenly Father and you love us, each one of us. Thank you that you have so many good things uh, to give us. And thank you that all of that is possible through Jesus Christ and through what he has done for us. As we think about him this morning, about the person of Jesus, uh, why he came and who he is, Lord, I pray that you would open uh, our eyes, you would open our ears to hear what you want to say. We pray for your blessing on our children as they go to, 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 to their groups to learn of this, and we pray for your blessing on us as adults, because Lord, uh, we want to be like children too. We need to learn, we need to grow, we want to change. So Lord, we, we give ourselves to you now. Thank you, our great and good God. Amen. Now let's stand and sing, How Great Is Our God.
So um, a friend said to me, do you know Jesus isn't real? I said, oh? <laughs> and he said, yes, uh, did you know that? Did you know that? Did you know that Jesus never really existed? Um, and I said, tell me more. And he said, well, I've been reading this website. <laughs> he said, I've been reading this website about how Jesus never really existed, um, that he's just made up from, uh, from different religious stories, and, and you know, there's some, other, there's some other websites, and the evidence is, is really quite compelling, and you know, have you ever thought about it, I mean, the Bible, it's a copy of a copy of a copy, and stuff got added in over time, and uh, if you look, try to look at Jesus as, as history, it, just, it doesn't really hold up, and you know, I think it's great that I think it's great that you can have faith, and people can obviously still believe whatever they want, and they can pray. Um, uh, and maybe whether Jesus really existed in history, maybe that doesn't really matter, but you know, I just thought you would want to know. This season we've been looking at what we believe, and we've been recognizing uh, that to believe something affects your whole life. It makes a difference if I believe that Banger Football Club are the best football club in the world. That changes my life. That changes uh, who my friends are. It changes what I spend my money on. It changes how I spend my time. What we believe really matters. And whether or not Jesus really lived really 
matters. And that's why when we said those words together earlier, there's that rather odd moment. I always find it jarring. I don't know if you find it jarring because we're making these statements about God and who God is. Um, and then there's something happens because we kind of go, I believe it. in Jesus Christ. He was conceived of the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate. Whoop. <laughs> what, what are you, Pontius Pilate, what are you doing in there? Because we're speaking out this truth about God, and all of a sudden there's this guy, Pontius Pilate, just popping up. Hello, I'm here too. It's this sudden uh, gear change. What's it doing there? Well, it's there because it places Jesus in history. Because there have always been people who have tried to say things like, well, maybe Jesus is an important idea, but he wasn't a real man. So really, those websites that my friend stumbled upon are nothing new. But they are rather odd. To deny that Jesus existed as a real person in history is a strange thing to do. Because here's how human beings do history. So uh, take something like Caesar's Gallic War. This is an ancient document that tells us all about what Julius Caesar got up to, the battles he fought, etc. Caesar's Gallic Wars, it's a key document in Roman history. No one doubts its authenticity. No one doubts that the events in that document took place more or less the way they're described. It is history. But here's the thing. We don't have any records of Caesar's Gallic War from that time. Of course we don't. They're ancient paper, papyrus, whatever. It crumbles. In fact, the oldest copies we have of Caesar's Gallic War are copies of copies. And the earliest of these copies uh, were made 950 years after it was first written down. A 950 year gap. It's a long time. And yet, no historian doubts that these are accurate. Because they can verify it. Because actually, there's not just one uh, copy uh, that that has that gap. There's there's nine or ten copies of Caesar's Gallic War. They're all kind of that that age. Um, uh, And they've only got very, very minor differences. And so historians can look at it and say, yes, that is verifiable. That is history. That happened. Now let's look at the New Testament. Um, 27 separate documents about Jesus. They were written sort of between uh, about 40 AD and 100 AD. Um, We have manuscript fragments from 130 AD. And we have full manuscripts by 350 AD. In terms of ancient history, that is no time at all. 170 to 450 years. Tiny gap. Uh, We said that Caesar's Gallic Wars ancient document has 10 copies of that age. The New Testament books have over 5,300 Greek manuscripts in the original Greek, plus 10,000 translations into Latin and 9,300 other translations. So, the evidence for Jesus in history is a whole lot stronger, a whole lot stronger than for other historical events that nobody doubts. So, why are there not hundreds of websites explaining to me that Julius Caesar never existed and the whole thing is one big conspiracy. Why does no one bother to make those websites? Well, here's the truth. If you believe in the historical fact that Julius Caesar existed, you don't really have to do anything about that. That might not make much of a difference in your life. But if you believe this historical evidence that Jesus existed, that 
might just change everything. That might just change your life. So I wonder about the people behind those websites that my friend found. What's going on for them? I mean, maybe, I don't know, maybe they really didn't like their Sunday school teacher. Or maybe those folks don't like things that they hear from public figures who claim to be Christians. But it might also be that the claims Jesus makes, his teaching, his death, his resurrection, and the response that that demands from us is so uncomfortable, so challenging, that these people find it easier just to shut it out, just pretend that Jesus didn't exist, and in fact, go to quite a lot of effort to try and convince others the same thing. Because the truth is, if you believe it, you have to do something about it. If you believe it, you live it. Let's watch a video. Acho que jogadora é ganhar dinheiro, fazer festa, é, balada, mulherada, enfim. Para mim, Deus está em primeiro lugar, né? Sobre todas as coisas. Todas quintas e domingo, quando eu não tenho compromisso né, no, no clube, eu venho aqui à igreja. O nome da igreja é Catedral Internacional. Uma igreja que reúne muitas pessoas praticamente do mundo todo, né? E desde quando eu cheguei aqui já fazem cinco anos que eu, que eu venho, congrego aqui nessa igreja. Então é um tempo de muito aprendizado que eu tenho aqui. E aí quando eu passei a entender sobre a Bíblia, sobre entender sobre o que era realmente o certo, o que não era, foi na Ucrânia, assim, quando Fernandinho e Jadson também faziam cultos na casa deles, né? faziam, sabe, como se fosse uma célula assim na casa, bate, bate papo mesmo, falar sobre a Bíblia, falar sobre... É aí que eu comecei a entender sobre a Bíblia, assim, sobre essas coisas. Que Jesus Cristo é o único salvador e tal. E aí eu... É, foi onde eu aceitei, me, aceitei Jesus Cristo como meu único salvador e também quis me batizar. Fui lá na Ucrânia, me batizei, eu e minha esposa, nós nos batizamos numa banheira assim, banheira de casa. É, foi até na... o Jadson também estava com a esposa dele. E foi lá que eu comecei assim, né? Me ajuda muito, me ajuda muito, em todos os aspectos. Porque a gente sabe, principalmente no futebol. No futebol, a gente sabe que futebol, um dia você é o melhor jogador, no outro dia, você de repente jogando mal, você não serve, você... Então a fé me ajuda a, a ter esse equilíbrio, né? Saber que a, os elogios não, não, não vão me, me deixar a subir né, para a cabeça, né, achar que já sou né, o cara. E o, as, as, as críticas também não vão me jogar para baixo, né? Então ter esse equilíbrio, saber que, que é importante ter esse equilíbrio, porque se você não tem o equilíbrio, você acaba às vezes de, de uma forma ou de outra se afundando até, né? Porque se você sobe demais, de repente o tombo é maior, né? E eu realmente me sinto muito é, feliz de poder é, ser, é, ter essa fé, poder também de alguma forma levar um pouco é, para as outras pessoas, né? Às vezes 
sem falar, sem, sem, sem fazer algo, só com a minha postura, às vezes o meu, o meu jeito de ser, as pessoas falam, nossa, acho que ele, ele, é, ele é diferente, sabe? Então, assim, não precisa ficar, às vezes não precisa ficar falando para a pessoa, né? às vezes não precisa ficar botando na cabeça, não, você tem que aceitar Jesus, você tem que ser isso, você tem que ser aquilo, a pessoa vai ver as suas atitudes, né? vai ver como você é, como você faz as coisas, como você lida com as coisas, enfim, então é isso que eu procuro que eu procuro fazer no dia a dia. Believing in Jesus changes everything. If we believe it, we live it. It seeps out into every decision, into every conversation. It changes how we understand ourselves, uh, how we understand the world. Today, over two billion people claim to follow Jesus. Two billion. People who have chosen to put Jesus first in their lives. People who have chosen to let Jesus make the decisions about how they're going to live their lives. People who have experienced um, the change inside that comes when we stop listening to who the world tells us we are, who we think we are, and we start listening to who Jesus says we are. Because the fact is, these two billion people, they don't believe in Jesus first and foremost because of the historical evidence. They believe in Jesus because they have found for themselves that if they put their trust in him, if they pray and invite Jesus into their lives, if they put Jesus first in their lives, they have experienced transformation in their hearts and lives. They've experienced freedom. And that's because Jesus did something no other figure in history could do. Jesus did something no other human being could do. The kindness Jesus showed, the challenge Jesus gave the world led to him being executed on a cross under the rule of Pontius Pilate. But God used that suffering and death to defeat suffering and death once and for all and to set us free from the mess that we've got ourselves into. Antonia's going to come now. Antonia is going to read from Scripture, and I want you to listen to these words. These, uh, these words are a prophecy that was written hundreds of years before Jesus lived, and yet somehow explained to us exactly uh, what Jesus did for us on the cross. Thanks, Antonia. The reading today is from Isaiah chapter 53. If you'd like to join in and you're here in the building, it's page number 741 in the Pew Bibles. Isaiah chapter 53. Who has believed our message? And to whom has the arm of the Lord been revealed? He grew up before him like a tender shoot and like a root out of dry ground. He had no beauty or majesty to attract us to him, and nothing in his appearance that we should desire him. He was despised and rejected by mankind, a man of suffering and familiar with pain. Like one from whom people hide their faces, he was despised, and we held him in low esteem. Surely he took up our pain and bore our suffering, yet we considered him punished by God, stricken by him and afflicted. But he was pierced for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities. The punishment that brought us peace was on him. And by his wounds we are healed. We all like sheep have gone astray, each of us has turned to our own way, and the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. 
He was oppressed and afflicted, yet he did not open his mouth. He was led like a lamb to the slaughter, and as a sheep before its shearers is silent, he did not open his mouth. By oppression and judgment, he was taken away. Yet who of his generation protested? For he was cut off from the land of the living. For the transgression of my people, he was punished. He was assigned a grave with the wicked and with the rich in his death, though he had done no violence and nor was any deceit in his mouth. Yet it was the Lord's will to crush him and cause him to suffer. And though the Lord makes his life an offering for sin, he will see his offspring and prolong his days, and the will of the Lord will prosper in his hand. After he has suffered, he will see the light of life and be satisfied. By his knowledge, my righteous servant will justify many, and he will bear their iniquities. Therefore, I will give him a portion among the great, and he will divide the spoils with the strong, because he poured out his life unto death and was numbered with the transgressors. For he bore the sin of many and made intercession for the transgressors. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Every single one of us has messed up. Every single one of us has done things that we're not proud of. Not a single one of us is innocent. But Jesus was. Jesus did no wrong. Jesus was the perfect human who got right all the things that we get wrong, that I get wrong every day. And that makes Jesus the example for us all to follow. But it also means that God could use Jesus' death on the cross to set us all free. Jesus could die in our place, in your place, in my place, and pay the price for our sins, yours and mine. And that means that um, before God, before God, we are considered innocent. Our slate is wiped clean. We no longer need to live with any guilt. We begin again a new life, free now to do what is right, to do what is good with God's help. And if you can believe that, then you can live it. I can think of nothing that can make a bigger difference in someone's life than to know that God is on their side. God is their cheerleader. Their sin has been paid for. Their guilt can be washed away. And if you've never said yes to that, Or if you need to be reminded of that, then let today be the day. When we pray in a moment, make that the time that you say yes to Jesus. When we share um, this bread and wine later on to remember his body broken and blood poured out on the cross. Make that the moment that it becomes real to you. just want to invite you to, uh, to close your eyes uh, and bow your heads to uh, cut out distractions and have a moment between yourself and God. And just as we continue to pray, Andrea, will you begin just to lead us into our next song as I pray? Thank you. Lord Jesus, we thank you that your life 
life, your teaching, your miracles, your death and resurrection was for us. Thank you, Jesus, that if I was the only person in the world, that you would have gone to the cross for me. We thank you, Lord, that for each one of us, you make it possible for us to have forgiveness, to see an end to guilt, to be set free from addiction to destructive behavior. You make it possible for us to begin again, to be uh, part of your family, to join in your work in the world. All that amazing stuff Alan told us about earlier, um, your people transforming this world. Lord Jesus, you give us Uh, You offer us purpose in life. And so if today is the day that you want to say yes to Jesus for the first time, or today is the day that you want to uh, recommit yourself to Jesus again, or remind yourself of the reality of Jesus um, and what he's done for us, I'm going to pray a simple prayer. And as I pray that simple prayer, I want to... uh, offer that you can simply repeat those words in your own mind, in your own heart, in quietness. As a way of drawing a line, saying yes to Jesus, stepping into the newness of life that he offers you. So let's be quiet for a moment and then we're going to pray that prayer. that on the cross you took my sin you suffered and died so that I could be set free Lord Jesus as you died I want that, uh, that old self, that old part of me to die and be buried. Jesus, as you rose again, I want to rise again with you. And for today to be the first day of the rest of my life with you. living in your strength, living in your power, living with your help, putting you first in my life. Being the person that you made me to be. Father God, thank you for your love for me. Spirit of God, I invite you to come into my life. Make God real to me every day. Lead me and guide me in the way you want me to go. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Can I invite you to stand? 
Um, and if uh, that was a moment for you where you said yes to God for the first time, uh, or yes again, I want to hear about it, I want you to tell me about it, um, grab a chat with me afterwards or lift the phone to me during the week. Um, but now as we, uh, as we remain here in this place at the foot of the cross, we're going to sing, we're going to draw our attention again to what Jesus has done for us, uh, and then we're going to share this bread and this wine. So let's, uh, let's worship God, let's give thanks to God for what Jesus has done. table together. I just want to lead us in some prayers uh, for others. And I'm just going to use some of the verses that Antonia read for us from uh, Isaiah 53 as a pointer for, for our prayer. Welcome back, children. Good to have you back uh, with us and lead us too. Let's pray. He was despised and rejected by mankind, a man of suffering and familiar with pain, like one from whom people hide their faces. He was despised, and we held him in low esteem. These words given by the Holy Spirit tell us something important, Lord, that long before you took one step on the earth as a human being, that you knew you would be despised and rejected by us and suffer at our hands. And yet you still came. Lord, we worship you this morning knowing that you came because you love us. You could have chosen a different path, but you didn't. Still you came knowing you would be rejected. Thank you, Lord, for your incredible love for us. We pray this morning for anyone we know who feels the pain and rejection and hatred of others or maybe even themselves. 
for those who struggle with self-loathing, who've come to despise their body shape or the way they look because of others' expectations. Show us, Lord, how to be a church, a community of love that goes out of our way to love those who don't or can't love themselves, those who feel rejected, and to introduce them to you. Surely he took up our pain and bore our suffering, yet we considered him punished by God, stricken by him and afflicted. Lord Jesus, you came not just to experience the pain and suffering of human life, of your own human life, you came to take up our pain, to bear our suffering. You came to draw the poison of sin's consequence from our souls by taking it on yourself. And you once said to those who would follow you that they too must take up their cross. Lord, forgive us for so often misusing these words. Oh, it's the cross I have to bear. We glibly say of some inconvenience to our own lives. Lord, forgive us. Lord Jesus, you didn't take up your own pain, you took up ours. Teach us how to take up pain on behalf of others too, to spend ourselves on behalf of the hungry and the hurting so that we can be a church of people who genuinely follow you. And we pray this morning for those who are in physical or mental pain or both, those struggling with the seemingly endless symptoms of long COVID, or fibromyalgia, or ME, with multiple sclerosis, or any other degenerative disease. Lord, have mercy. And if it's us, give us grace and strength in weakness. And if it's not, then show us how to care, to bear one another's burdens and pain. But he was pierced for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities. The punishment that brought us peace was on him. And by his wounds, we are healed. Thank you, Lord, for the incredible hope of these words fulfilled in Jesus Christ. Thank you, Jesus, that you came, lived, died, and rose again, not just to bear our suffering, but to transform it. Not just to take our sin, but to bury it. Not just to help us, but to heal us. Thank you, Jesus, that you passed through human death to pioneer and begin human transformation, not just in our future resurrection after death, but to taste it now in our present life as we live in your kingdom by the power of the Holy Spirit. Lord Jesus, you said... Whoever believes in you will do the works you have been doing and we will do even greater things than these because you go to the Father. Thank you, Jesus, that real life transformation through the power of your Holy Spirit is possible now. Teach us at Mavilla Abbey Church how to be a community that believes and lives these things in praying for the sick to be healed in seeing lives and the community around us transformed. Make us, Lord, into your people, we pray. Amen. Now we're going to come round uh, the Lord's table together uh, uh, in a moment, and we want to share in this meal together wherever we're taking part from. So... Uh, There's just a few simple instructions. If you're taking part from home, uh, then please have your bread and wine or alternatives in front of you. In a moment, we're going to share a sign of peace among us, and we're going to pray some words of preparation together. There'll be words on the screen uh, for us to join join in. And then we're going to sing, and during worship, if you're here in the building, stewards with sanitized hands will come to you with some bread and wine. There are uh, half-cut grapes uh, for, 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 for children. If you, if you wish to uh, receive, hold your hands out in front of you and they'll offer you a piece of bread uh, with tongs and an individual glass of grape juice, uh, which you'll lift from the tray or a grape if, the, uh, if you'd like your child to take part uh, in, in that way. 
I want to say that if you're, if you're not a, a member of Movilla, if you've come this morning or you're watching this morning and uh, all that we've been talking about, about the nature of God and what it means to believe in him, if these are things that you don't yet believe, but you've sent something in, in, in what has, has occurred this morning, that this is something that you would like to believe, you want to love the Lord, you want to know what it is to love him, then you are welcome uh, at this table. You are welcome at this meal. You're welcome to take part because it's the Lord's table and he welcomes those who love him and those who want to love him more. You'll keep the bread and the wine or the grape or whatever you, you've got uh, until we all eat and drink it together at the instructed point. So after you're given it, keep hold of it until after the song, until I lead us in some words to say together when we'll eat together. We are the body of Christ. By the one spirit, we were all baptized into one body. Let us then pursue all that makes for peace and builds up our common life. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Thank you. Now we're going to share the peace with one another. Now unfortunately we still can't uh, move uh, uh, amongst uh, the congregation. Don't we long for the time when we can hug again, when we can at very least shake hands? Uh, We can't for the moment. But I am going to ask you to to stand up and to turn around and to look at the people around you. And um, we're going to say the peace of the Lord be with you. We're going to do it in sign language because that's an easy way that we can communicate without being uh, right up close. And I'm going to give you permission to take off your mask to mouth the words rather than uh, speak them. Okay, just to mouth the words, but we're going to say, the peace of the Lord be with you. Okay, you're going to mouth those words. So the peace of the Lord be with you. So smile, turn to your neighbor and say that. Let's take our seats. I invite you now, if you feel comfortable to do this, uh, I I invite you, if you'd like to do it, to hold out your hands in front of you in a gesture of openness to God. It's a physical, I suppose, expression of what's in our hearts um, as we respond to his invitation to come and to share uh, these symbols on the table. And we'll use these words uh, in front of us. The Lord is here. His spirit is with us. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. Father, almighty and ever-living God at all times and in all places, it is right to give you thanks and praise. And so with all your people, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we proclaim your great and glorious name, forever praising you and saying, Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed are you, Father, the creator and sustainer of all things. You made us in your own image. Male and female, you created us. Even when we turned away from you, you never ceased to care for us. But in your love and mercy, you freed us from the slavery of sin, 
giving your only begotten Son to become man and suffer death on the cross to redeem us. He made there the one complete and all-sufficient sacrifice for the sins of the whole world. He instituted and in his holy gospel commanded us to continue a perpetual memory of his precious death until he comes again. On the night that he was betrayed, he took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, take, eat, This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup, and when he had given thanks to you, he gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you, for this is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Therefore, Father, with this bread uh, and this cup, we do as Christ your Son commanded. We remember his passion and death. We celebrate his resurrection and ascension. And we look for the coming of his kingdom. Accept through him our great high priest. This our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. And as we eat and drink these holy gifts, Grant by the power of your life-giving spirit that we may be made one in your holy church and partakers of the body and blood of your Son, that he may dwell in us and we in him through the same Jesus Christ our Lord, by whom and with whom and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory are yours, Almighty Father, forever and ever. Amen. We'll now sing of the sacrifice of Jesus as we prepare to receive these symbols of his giving for us. As I say, you're all welcome to take part in this meal. If you, if you don't feel comfortable taking and receiving this morning equally, that's absolutely fine. We bless you and we're just so glad that you're here but uh, someone will come to you in a moment uh, with these things. Let's, uh, let's sing together. We'll remain seated because that makes it easier for the stewards to come uh, around us as we sing. Oh. 
Another name for this meal is the Eucharist, and that word literally means thanksgiving. We're thanking God for the cross and all that he has given through Jesus Christ, his brokenness making us whole. The bread which we break is a sharing in the body of Christ. We being many are one body, for we all share in the one bread. Now taking your piece of bread uh, in your hand, let's say uh, together uh, these words. The body of Christ broken for us. And let us eat. Taking the cup in our hands, we say together, the blood of Christ shed for us, and with thanksgiving we drink. Now let's just be quiet for a moment for our own internal conversation with God, for our own thanksgiving. We've been fed with far more than just physical food uh, this morning. If you prayed that prayer that Michael uh, led us in earlier on for the very first time this morning, if you took a step of faith towards God for the first time uh, in your life, we'd love to, to, to hear from you uh, afterwards. Come and, and, uh, come, and, come and tell us. Now, together, having been fed, let's... Um, Offer ourselves back to God as we prepare to go out in service for him. We'll use the words of this prayer as a way of of giving ourselves back to God. Almighty God, we thank you for feeding us with the spiritual food of the body and the blood of your son, Jesus Christ. Through him, we offer you our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice Send us out in the power of your spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. Amen. Amen. Let's stand uh, and honor the name of Jesus as we sing. Jesus is the name we honor.
Forget next Saturday, uh, if uh, litter picking team, if you want to come and join in with that, 9:30 uh, a.m. Men's group uh, is meeting uh, this this coming uh, Thursday. Is that half past seven? Yes, I think that that's 7:30. So um, there's a men's group at half past seven uh, uh, this week, uh, guys. You're very welcome to come and join in that for some fellowship and some learning some stuff uh, together. Now let's, let's go out and let's glorify and let's lift him high in everything we do. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face towards you and in all that you do, give you peace. Amen.